I found these petri dish racks and canisters on eBay for a good value. All right. You can see the canister, put the whole thing in the pressure cooker. And then when you're ready to get in front of the flow hood, you just take it out. There's your rack. You can see just how these dishes stack in there. Oh, very easy. They're not going to slide around. Now they're contained. You can take out the pressure cooker without worrying about any kind of contamination getting in there and then sanitize it off in front of the flow hood and open it up. And because I don't really have a pressure cooker the right size, because those are about 10 inches high, I got a new All-American 921. And you can see it's pretty much just the, the junior version of the big ones I have. And these will fit perfectly in there. It'll be a little bit of a wreck, so it'll sit, sit up about yay high, but pretty much about the same height as the rim, and of course there's some space inside the rim. But that'll be enough space for at least two of these, and, you know, my jar of agar media. That'll make, that'll make doing a lot of petri dishes much simpler. And I figure I'm probably going to be needing about 36 dishes worth of culture per week because I'm going to speed things up this year doing uh, two batches of sawdust a week and probably each bag of sawdust will get a third of a petri dish which you know it's gonna be about a, a slice about yay big so two fat agar wedges per bag and that should be quite a bit to inoculate a morel sawdust bag and also too I'm probably going to be using the same system of petri dishes to sawdust for any oyster bags I make. Just because you know it's got to be better because it's not having as many cell divisions and the culture has to be, you know, younger and stronger. So I was thinking ahead one day of this new setup and the thought occurred to me, well, you know, what do you do when you have a top to your, your lab? set up you know not a lot of space and you have the walls enclosed in so the air is really coming in hard and now you have no no place to put an alcohol lamp because the stronger airflow is going to blow it out no matter where you put it probably even if you put a, a windshield on the back side of it the the airflow now since it's increased is going to be too much for for that alcohol lamp and of course, by alcohol lamp, I mean one of one of these classic ones that you know every student lab and chemistry lab will have, you know. And so, Morel King suggested that I get one of these butane lab burners, although they're probably used for you know all kinds of purposes. Purposes, you know, maybe like uh, you know melting glass and things of that nature and they're refillable on the bottom you can see and they just take these you know, standard standard refill cans you always want to use though at least 5x refined or you know some something other than Ronson butane fuel that's gonna burn nasty and make a lot of soot but I got these two styles mainly because this is this was the model that Morel King suggested to me but um, it actually had some poor reviews on Amazon saying that the clicker would go out um, where it was maybe hard to fill but I just think that the hard to fill part was just uh, nobody was using a nice fat to butane can and the, uh, the clicker issues I've, I've noticed that most likely it's just because there's a little bit of corrosion on the inside and see if you can see how well will this focus up close right about there this bit right here there's a little bit of corrosion on the electrode where it sparks so I just took a, a stiff piece of wire 
kind of ground it back so that the electrode was a bit more exposed. So now it, so now it makes a nice, good click every time. But all I got to do is spin it a little bit to you start hearing the hiss, and then click it. You can see I can adjust it to its pretty high. I'll probably not really need to make it any higher than that. And then for every scalpel steriliz sterilization that I need, I ignite it, hold scalpel in my left hand, and then with my right hand just turn it off and continue on. And then, you know, so I mean, I'm going to be getting good at controlling this with my, my right hand. I'm left-handed, by the way. And making that work. So that seems to work fine. And it came full of butane. It holds quite a bit. I think they said that if it's running continuously, it'll go for about a half hour. So if you run out of butane, you know, refill it outside your lab room and make sure, you know, definitely make sure that you have no uh, sparking or open flames. You know, best, best to do it outside if you could, but you know, ideally you want to stay clean, so be careful. And at pinch, if that one gives out for some reason someday, I have this other one that is advertised as a lab burner as well, but I've seen people also sell it as a kind of like a, a small coffee pot heater, like a camping heater, so different purposes, but instead of making a, a jet flame, let's see, gotta turn it up a little more. There. It's a little bit harder to work. It makes kind of like a fat burner flame. So, probably not as good for this application because I bet, I mean, you can see if just waving my hand blows out a little bit. Um, I'll have to see how well it holds up in front, but yeah. It'll be my backup, basically. And always remember to keep a fire extinguisher within your reach in your laboratory. I've never had to use that, but, uh, you know, God forbid I ever have to use a fire extinguisher. <laughs> be, be careful, be safe. Um, good technique is the best safety precaution. Once I get the new set together, I'll use some of this thick foil tape and go over all the cracks. And then I got some extra wide stuff to redo the, uh, the masking job I've done with this plastic because it's not holding very well anymore. The masking tape doesn't hold forever. And you can see back up here actually where it's, it's sagging down now. So yeah, I'm gonna repair all that, tape it up, and then I'll be steam cleaning this room again wiping everything down and uh, probably doing a, a reef refresh culture of my morels both on the slants that I made and on the original cultures that I got from Royal King and uh, make some extra slants with those just to refresh the culture it's been about five months in the fridge at least since I've used them and you always want to give your cultures a refresh about every six months to uh, make sure they're healthy.